In the video, we will begin to look at the chemistry of some oxidizing materials. Uh, and this will serve for us as the beginning of our exploration of chapter 11 in the textbook. Now, as far as hazardous materials are concerned, oxidizers are classified as class 5 hazardous materials. And they fall into one of two. Um, they can either be pure oxidizers or they can be peroxides. And there is a distinction between the two that we will get into later on in the chapter. But by definition, an oxidizer is simply a material that can cause or enhance the combustion of another material. So oxidizers do not have to actually be consumed in the fire themselves. They can just be bystanders. They can just be there. Uh, but one of the things that they will do is they will help to have other things that will combust along the way. They're usually there as a means of providing oxygen or some other way of, of getting oxidizing material present in the fire. So let's take a look at oxidizers as a broad class of materials. And so what we need to look at is that Oxidizers are part of a larger series of reactions called redox reactions. Now, redox reactions are chemical reactions where electrons are exchanged between reactants. Um, and so we, if you go back to, uh, we were in, you know, chapters four and five, right before midterm, um, we talked about redox reactions and we, ta or we talked more specifically about things that were just general reactions, combustion, composition, single replacement, and that kind of thing. And redox reactions are kind of an umbrella that encompasses a number of those different kinds of reactions. In fact, all the reaction types are oxidizing reduction reactions or redox reactions other than double replacement reactions. Double replacement reactions involve no exchanges of electrons. Um, just the reorientation and, uh, uh, switching around of the ions that are paired together. Now, when these redox reactions occur, the energy that is released as a part of them can be harnessed. And where they become dangerous as far as fuel line uh, are concerned is that harnessed energy can lead to combustion of fuels, chlorination of water, explosions, bleaching, um, firework reactions, and so forth. Now, the next part that we would look at is, well, what actually is an oxidizing agent? Oxidizing agents, or oxidizers, or sometimes more rarely referred to as oxidants, are substances that support the independent combustion processes. And some common examples of these are oxygen gas, fluorine, and chlorine gas as well. Um, but what these are really good at doing, these are good at stripping electrons from other materials. That's what an oxidizer does takes the electrons away from other things um, and can cause some of these other processes to occur in the same time. One of those things that can occur is combustion itself. Now, some common characteristics of oxidizers, well, these would include the fact that they are extremely powerful. Um, they're very reactive. And... Uh, the kinds of things that can react with oxidizers would be, well, pretty much anything that is capable of burning. So um, you've got fuels, lubricants, greases, oils, um, animal byproducts, uh, fats and, and, and uh, hair and whatnot. Uh, a lot of your uh, 
class A fire materials, paper, coal, uh, carbon coke, uh, straw, saw, sawdust, wood shavings. These are the kinds of things that are capable of reacting and react quite uh, readily with oxidizing agents, especially under certain kinds of conditions. Now, if we want to look a little bit more globally at the process of, oxid uh, of oxidation and reduction, there are a number of ways that we can do that. Um, one of the things that we can look at is just kind of by nature of definition, that is what constitutes oxidation, what constitutes reduction. Well, oxidation um, can be referred to in a number of different ways. Oxidation is most commonly thought of as the loss of electrons in a reaction process. But there are other ways of going about that. We can look at things like oxidation numbers, charges. Um, uh, a good way of thinking about oxidation number is, is as charge. So if if a substance goes from being positive 2 in charge to positive 5 in charge, we say that its oxidation number has increased. We can also think about it as it's lost electrons. Um, if you go from positive 2 to positive 5, you've lost 3 electrons along the way. Reduction, on the other hand, is gain of us in a reaction. And this we see again with, with oxidation number, we're talking about charge here. And so we see that we will have gains in electrons, decreases in oxidation number. So um, if something goes from negative two to negative four in charge, if it goes from positive one to negative one in charge, a decrease in oxidation number would be considered a reduction process. And what gets tricky here is associate with each of these are kind of unique in the sense that oxidation is something that occurs um, with what we would call a reducer. A reducer gets oxidized and on the flip side, a reduction occurs with one of those aforementioned um, one of those uh, previously mentioned. So let's take a look at those two processes a little bit more closely then. So how do we recognize oxidation? If I don't have access to oxidation numbers and, I, and none of the things appear to be charged, how do I recognize that something is being oxidized? Well, the easiest way to do it is to look for something that is gaining oxygen. If it gains oxygen, then, it, then we can say that it is being oxidized. And we always look from the standpoint of reactants. So we can see in this particular example, the methane, the CH4, is being oxidized because we can see that the oxygen is inserting itself into the carbon and into the hydrogen to make carbon dioxide and water. That is what is happening in this process. The methane gets oxidized the oxygen is what we would call the oxidizer. So in cases like this, where nothing's charged, I can't look at it and say, okay, well, this is going from a, you know, no charge to a negative two charge, and this is going from here to here. 
I can't say that just by looking at it. I have to look for other clues. Tracking oxygen is one of those clues. Now let's look at reduction by contrast. Reduction is a, happens in any substance that happens to lose oxygen over the course of time. And so if I look at it from that standpoint, I can see that in this case, the manganese dioxide, MnO2, is giving away its oxygen to the hydrogen here. And the hydrogen is taking it to make water. So in this particular case, we would call the uh, manganese dioxide a reducer because it is giving away oxygen. And in the same way, we can call the hydrogen the oxidizer because it is, in fact, taking that oxygen. It is gaining oxygen. Um, and so these two processes are intimately tied to each other. They exist, they coexist together, and one cannot exist without the other. You cannot have oxidation without reduction. You cannot have an oxidizer without a reducer. They are intimately tied to one another. So let's take a look at an example here. I can see that I have a reaction between aluminum and potassium perchlorate. The question is, which is the oxidizer and which is the reducer in this particular reaction? Well, automatically, we should look at this and say, well, my oxidizer and my reducer are not going to be on this half of the equation. I know that already because oxidizers and reducers are reactants. So I need to look at what is changing. And I can see that the aluminum has no oxygen, so it can't give oxygen away. Since it has no oxygen, it's going to be our reducer. And the potassium perchlorate, which has oxygen to give up and gives it to the aluminum, is our oxidizer. If we follow the path of the oxygen, the oxygen leaves the potassium perchlorate and goes to the aluminum. And in the process, we have the oxidation of the aluminum. met simultaneously with the reduction of the potassium perchlorate. So this is one of the things that you're going to be able to uh, and be expected to do out of this particular unit. You're going to have to be able to Look at chemical equations that do have oxidation and reduction aspects to them and identify when something is being oxidized and when something is being, re being reduced and when something's acting as an oxidizer and when something's a reducer. In the second video, we will talk about classes of oxidizing materials, um, starting with the, uh, the, the practically, uh, stable classes of oxidizers and going all the way up to explosive level oxidizers. Have a good day.